Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial on how to import a mesh from Gmesh into OpenFoam and solve the case in op OpenFoam. So in this case we're going to solve a 2D laminar flow across a cylinder. Um, and in Gmesh I have already made the physical surfaces called uh, inlet, outlet and so on. So these names are to be recognized in OpenFoam when we uh, import it there. And I've already created a mesh file called um, cylinder.mesh. So this file is to be imported into OpenFoam. So the first thing we want to do is to create a, an empty folder and simply copy the tutorial of the cavity case into that folder. So here I have the tutorial of the incompressible um, stuff in OpenFoam. So go ahead and um, copy the cavity content of the cavity case into the cylinder flow case. There you go. And um, copy the transport properties outside of the constant folder. So paste it there and then go ahead and delete the constant folder. Remember the constant for the folder only contains the geometry of the problem so, which is which is what we will, what we want to modify now. So now go ahead and copy the mesh file that we already created in Gmesh. Copy that into um, into the cylinder flow case like that. So now we are ready to make the mesh from the cylinder flow case. So open up your t terminal, control alt t and go t inside this folder. So in my case it's like this. Uh, here now I'm inside the, um, this folder. So now I Right, gmesh to foam slash uh, space um, cylinder dot msh. Enter. So now you can see that um, open foam generates the mesh, and uh, that the names I gave the the surfaces are imported into gmesh. Are imported into open foam. And you can also see here that the polymesh folder has been created. Uh, so go back and copy the transport properties back into the constant folder. There you go. Now there are th three files we want to modify now. One is the is the boundary file in the polymesh folder, and it's the boundary conditions of the P and U files. So first we modify the boundary file which is here so open up this one the only thing we want to do here is to is to name the front and back surfaces to type empty so copy out this thing and write empty like that save um, patch is good for the the, the rest of them Go back to the zero folder, um, and here we we'll want to modify some uh, something because this is for the cavity case. So um, let's start with the inlet. So this is the P. So inlet for P should be zero gradient. That's good. Outlet. for p should be fixed value um, type fixed value like this and the value should be uniform zero like that so that should be the outlet
um, the top should be um, type zero gradient. And so does the, the bottom. Bottom. Type zero gradient. Um, and um, the cylinder walls as well. Remember, we named the walls to be named cylinder walls here. So these names m must match. So everything everything uh, that we set in the in the P and U files must match these names. Um, so cylinder walls type zero gradient. So that should be it. Um, cylinder walls type zero front to back empty, yeah. So go ahead and copy this thing. Um, like this, copy. Uh, that's good. Save. And then um, go up to the U file. Open up. And then just paste what you copied from the P file. Uh, paste like that. So now we're in the ve velocity file. So now the inlet should be fixed value. And the value should be uniform uh, one, oh, one, zero, zero. This is to be, uh, of course, one meter per second in the x direction. Uh, and the outlet should be uh, zero gradient. And the top and bottom should be slip walls. So write slip here. And the cylinder cylinder walls walls should be um, fixed value. And the value should be um, uniform zero zero zero. This is of course the no slip condition. And the front and back should be empty. So now I think we're ready. Remember that. You can never on a boundary specify both the pressure and the velocity condition. One of them has to be a gradient. So remember the inlet is a fixed value, so we have a velocity specification on the inlet, but we had a gradient of pressure. And the same thing on the outlet, we had a gradient of velocity and a f fixed value of pressure. So now press save. Um, and um, what we want to do before we solve it is to write check mesh just to check that the mesh is okay. So check mesh. Uh, it gives a conclusion here that m the mesh is okay. But there is a number of things you want to pay attention to here. I particularly want to pay attention to this um, max non orthogonality thing, uh, which should not exceed 80. Uh, you should also pay attention, you could look more into what the skewness means and what the aspect ratio means and things like that, but uh, a max aspect ratio of 2.0 is definitely okay. Um, and there is one more thing we want to write, and that is renumber mesh and overwrite. 
what this thing does is that it renumbers the mesh so it reduces the bandwidth of the matrix in the solver so it makes the solver a bit more efficient so press enter there we go so now we are in principle re ready to solve it so let's just go into the control dictionary just to specify how long so at the first the first time I want to, I run a simulation I always want to run it just for let's say one second or 0 0.5 seconds is okay just to see that everything is running um, so let's do that Just press ICO phone enter so now it's running I usually want to time how long it takes to run let's say half a second of simulation and then uh, so I have an idea of how long it's gonna take if I run a simulation over let's say a hundred seconds or so on. So here you can see uh, I like to just pay attention to the maximum current number. In general I don't want my current number to exceed let's say 0 0.3 but um, or 0 0.5 so this should be okay. The current number has to do with the stability of the solution. So if, if the current number explodes uh, your solution is likely to explode too. So now we generated the solution so we press para we generate we um, initialize para view by pressing para foam enter just to verify that the solution looks o okay press apply and uh, let's view the velocity and then just press play and this is pretty much what we expect to see during the first half a second of the simulation remember the domain is uh, 50 units long the cylinder is one unit uh, wide and the velocity was one meter per second so um, uh, that's it so that's pretty much how you import a mesh from Gmesh into OpenFoam thanks for watching